Last year, Justin Jefferson was asked who the best receiver is, in which he answered Devontae Adams, which I assume most people would agree with. The hot take comes in when he says, but after next year, it's going to be me. Yo, what's up guys, welcome to another video, and let's switch right into gear. Justin Jefferson has became a household name, but he started, with his, he started his college career at LSU with the likes of Joe Burrow as his quarterback, who is obviously thriving in the NFL currently, and with another star receiver who was more highly touted. And transcending in his own right, Jamar Chase, who has also been very successful in the NFL. The duo obviously broke all types of records and acquired several different accolades for their body of work, not only in the LSU books, but in NCAA history as a whole. In Justin Jefferson's final year at LSU, he accrued 111 receptions, which is an all-time school record, still hasn't been passed, with over 1,500 yards and 18 touchdowns. For reference, Randy Moss, who was looked at as the greatest college receiver of all time, in his final year with Marshall, he had 96 catches for over 1,800 yards and 26 touchdowns. Fun fact again, Randy Moss had at least one touchdown in every single college game he played in, which is crazy. Obviously, Jefferson held his own with the legendary cast of college receivers, but the underlying fact is how Jefferson had to play with another premier wide receiver, limiting his production, but still showcasing that talent. After setting records, winning a national championship and a dominant college career, come to the 2020 NFL Draft, Justin Jefferson was in what was believed to be one of the most stacked wide receiver classes of all time. Because despite how great he was playing, he was still looked at as inferior to other college standouts like Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, and CeeDee Lamb. So come the 2020 NFL Draft, first up on the board was Henry Ruggs at number 12. Notable for Ruggs was his blistering speed, which looked very valuable as Tyreek Hill was balling out at this time. Ruggs boasted a 4-2-6 40-yard dash, which is one of the quickest of all time. He didn't pan out as we know and is facing a sentence for a DUI, which is another topic for a different day. Next up at the number 15 spot was Jerry Judy. He had insane route running and was Henry Ruggs' teammate, who despite being more productive was taken after because of the value of speed brought again by Tyreek Hill. But he was also fast and a great route runner and landed with the Broncos, but he has also struggled and has a slightly better career than Ruggs so far. At the number 17 spot, the Cowboys were on the board and they decided to take CeeDee Lamb out of Oklahoma. While at this time it was a bit of a shocking pick as they seemed to take the best available player, even though they already had two receivers who already had a thousand plus yard seasons and Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. Could you imagine if they had added Justin Jefferson though? This investment sort of paid off though as CeeDee Lamb is their number one receiver and has produced very well. At the number 21 spot, the Eagles regrettedly took Jalen Rager, who was just not good. He wasn't very productive at TCU, but also fit that speedster mold and had high value for that reason alone. So finally, we're at the number 22 spot. The Minnesota Vikings are on the clock in the 2020 NFL Draft, and they, they decided to select Justin Jefferson, continuing their streak, which they didn't know at the time, of having great wide receivers. Over the last three decades, Chris Carter led the way in 1990, then passed the torch down to the likes of Randy Moss. Passing on to Percy Arvin for a short stint, and then Stefan Diggs, and obviously now Justin Jefferson. How much better Jettis has been compared to his 2020 counterparts. Absolutely blowing his competition out the water, Justin Jefferson has been sensational since the day he stepped foot in the NFL. In his rookie season with his back against the wall and the odds against him, he posted a staggering 1,400 receiving yards, which is a lot for a veteran receiver, let alone a rookie. He was fourth in the NFL in receiving yards, and this total, of course, is the rookie receiving yard record, surpassing Anquan Bolden's record. He also posted 88 receptions, which blew Randy Moss's previous rookie record of 69 out the water as well. He showed his big playability by having 23 catches of 20 plus yards, which was tied for the highest in the NFL at that time. In Jetta's rookie year alone, he was named a second team all pro, a pro bowler, all rookie first team, offensive rookie of the year, and ranked 53rd in the NFL top 100 list. In 2021, he posted an improved stat line of 108 receptions, 1,616 yards with 10 touchdowns. And in his sophomore season, he had several great outings he passed Odell's legendary start to his career by passing him and receiving yards for an NFL player in their first two seasons. By this time, he kept up his great play, elevating to serious superstardom, and was just 16 yards short of passing Randy Moss's franchise record that he set with the Vikings in receiving yards. So the 1,616 yard total was good for the second most in the NFL, 
if Cooper Cup didn't have his insane season, it probably would have been first in pretty much every other year. But despite it being Jetta's second season as a pro, he once again was named a pro bowler and awarded an all-pro as well. This time, he was ranked 17th in football. It was at this time that Jettis was poised to continue riding despite already being one of the best wideouts in the league, and he delivered. In just the first week of his third season, Jefferson posted a ridiculous 184 yards and two touchdowns that really showcased his big playability. Obviously, in the 2022 season, it showed, especially when they were in a close situation toward the end of the games. Listen to this. So the Vikings were 13-4 and last season, right? which is very good, obviously, but out of their 13 wins, 11 of them came in a one-score victory, which is the most in NFL history. Some may say it's fluky, but one thing we know is that it happened. Justin Jefferson was able to make the play almost every time, which is one of the main reasons the Vikings had a good year this year in general. Compared to his other seasons, this year they had a very positive record, and they were a threat in the NFC, leading the way specifically in the NFC North, over the Great Lions offense and Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. To add more to the history books, Jefferson also made one of the greatest catches in NFL history that some say is maybe the greatest catch of all time. Now, I'm going to pull up this clip for you guys, and you all have to let me know in the comment section if you've seen a better catch. No bias, no hate, no nothing. Objectively, with all things considered, have you seen a better catch? So in 2023, Justin Jefferson boasted a stat line of 128 receptions and 1,809 yards to go along with eight touchdowns. The real thing to unpack here is the magnitude of how impressive this is and the records he broke setting these totals. Not only did he lead the league in receptions and receiving yards, he was the youngest player to do so. He broke franchise records from former Vikings players that also happen to be Hall of Famers. This is Chris Carter, Randy Moss in those categories as well. He like, he'll likely pass Odell and Julio as the fastest player to 5,000 yards. He has the most yards throughout three seasons, so has the most 100-yard games during that span as well. Some people will say maybe we should have predicted this would come as their head coach is also one of the masterminds behind Cooper Cup's legendary 2021 season, in which he posted 1,947 yards, 145 receptions, and 16 touchdowns, which all broke all types of records, of course. Back to Jefferson, though, who still has so many numbers that are just shocking to see and realize such as him leading the league in yards after the catch. Him having a usage rate comparable to running backs despite being a wide receiver. He was a league high in generating first downs and big plays, which are plays over 20 yards. On top of all of those, Justin Jefferson averaged a whopping 106 yards per game. And because of all these, he was awarded the honors of being an All-Pro, being a pro bowler again, of course. And this time he was named the Offensive Player of the Year in the NFL. To cap all of these off, just recently amongst his peers, he was ranked the second best player in the sport of American football. Now, this is only to be behind Patrick Mahomes, who just came off of a winning season again, which he got a Super Bowl title. And this is all just by Justin Jefferson's third season. In some ways, the way Mahomes revolutionized the quarterback position for the new passing era that we've seen the league become, Justin Jefferson is the prototypical wide receiver with high volume, but with high efficiency and is extremely transcendent to the wide receiver position's future. His counterpart, Jamar Chase, has been awesome as well, but Justin Jefferson has been nothing short of amazing, and he is on track to possibly being one of the best wide receivers of all time. With that, let me know where you rank Justin Jefferson right now and what his projection for his career may be, especially considering he plays with a pass-heavy coach who has a philosophy that we've seen be very useful, which is getting the ball in their star's hands. So that's all I got for y'all today. Thanks for watching and you know what to do if you enjoy it. Peace.